Welcome to Homework Answers. We're going through the textbook C++ Programs to Accompany Programming Logic and Design, 8th edition by Joanne Smith. And in this video we're covering Lab 4-3. Uh, as always, remember to make the corrections necessary because I, I change a few things. Basically, this right here might be different in your data files. Um, what this problem is, or this lab is kind of trying to teach you is nested if statements. So if you look down here, that's where you'll find uh, your data file actually might be a little different. I, I've indented these to make it look more like they're nested inside of the else part. Um, so yours might fall kind of more in a straight line here. Um, but that's pretty much the, the whole point of this lab is to understand the nested if statements. <clears throat> and um, we'll start from the beginning here. I've just made a note up here. I'm not going to you know, say that anymore. But <clears throat> we have um, we have our uh, variables here, and we've got two for string, and that's you know just first and last name. We've got one for the number of transactions. So we've got basically an employee, and they're doing these transactions. They have a number of shifts, and each transaction or all of their transactions. Uh, combine will have a dollar value and uh, what we're just trying to find out is what their bonus is going to be so there's an equation down here that we're going to use in order to find that so I've, I've got these constants here um, you know bonus one through four I've got a score that's their score as an employee which is going to determine which bonus they get so we have to have variables for both of those and we have to have the constants for the different bonuses they can get so all this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, next we have our inputs. So we're just going to ask for the first and last name, number of shifts they work, number of transactions they've had, and the dollar value on those. Our calculation section, um, the book actually tells you how to do this too, so it's uh, fairly simple. Uh, we've got score equals in parentheses dollar value divided by number of transactions and then that statement divided by number of shifts. And that's going to give you your score, which is going to determine which bonus you get. So you see how the if statements work here, or the nested if statements. It's like you start off with, if the score is less than or equal to 30, then you're going to get, you know, bonus 1. And else, or otherwise, will check for the score being between 31 and 69. Um, then you get bonus two. Otherwise, we'll check for these parameters. Otherwise, we'll check for the score being above 200. So, it's uh, you know, just look this over. Really try to understand it. There, you can see where the score can lie between 70 and 199, or over 200. You see here how you've assigned bonus to equal bonus four that, you know, bonus four already has a value up here that's determined. So it's pretty, pretty easy to kind of see how it's laid out and how it works. Uh, the output here, you're just going to output the name and the employee's bonus. And of course, we want two decimal places. So that's where that comes in, into play. Um, let's go ahead and run it real fast, and I'll show you how it works. Let's just do this defer. Um, Williams. Let's see, he's done maybe 27 shifts. Uh, transactions, let's say 80. And the dollar value on those transactions, I'll just say it's 50,000. So he falls within the bonus one bracket. He's going to get $60 as a bonus. And now, let's go ahead and see if we can get a higher bonus there. Tim. Um, Smith. Number of shifts. Let's say it's... Uh, 25, and the number of transactions maybe 
and then maybe 75 and let's say his dollar value is a lot more than the other other ones so 150,000 so he's falling within the third bonus the 120 bracket there so it's a pretty easy program here um, not too much to it and they just want you to understand putting these nested if statements so they you know you have an if else and then the if else falls inside you know nested inside the else statement here and then this if else falls nested inside of this else statement and so on and so forth but that's about it thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lab